Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my Microsoft Cloud VDI series. We are, um, got, it's going to be episode 11, so we've got 14 episodes with the Windows 365 element, which is what we're on at the moment, and then we're going to move on to AVD. Um, so hopefully it's less technical content towards the back end of this because we're talking more about um, Windows 365 as a solution. We've done all the demo and all the technical stuff about it. It's more about planning the deployments, security aspects, um, but also um, what I want to do with this episode is start doing a comparison between Windows 365 Business and Enterprise. So without further ado, let's get started. As I mentioned, this is the Microsoft Cloud BDI series. Um, today is going to be part one of the Windows 365 Business versus Enterprise sort of subtopic. Uh, we'll do a general comparison, we'll do a look at purchasing and licensing differences and look at administrative differences in this episode. Uh, let's start off talk about general comparisons. So the first capability I want to talk about is domain join. So when it comes to Windows 365 Business, Entra join without Azure Virtual Network uh, VNet is supported, and that's kind of what I've got in place when, when I've done mine. Uh, when it comes to Windows 365 Enterprise, so that, that same um, capability is supported, so you know, without the virtual network. But also Entra join with VNet support and also hybrid Entra with VNet support as well. So being able to join to domain controller, your own privacy domain and Entra is fully supported in enterprise. So a lot more, a lot more capability, uh, well, a lot more features for the domain join capability. So let's talk about purchasing and licensing now. So we've talked about purchase channels from a capability perspective. Windows 365 Business, um, you can you can buy it from a, from the web direct or so from the M365 admin center, self service, or you can buy it from a CSP. With Enterprise, uh, it's available web direct uh, for your EA uh, Enterprise Agreement, and also CSP as well. From a licensing and assignment perspective, we've got the admin center or the Entre portal for Windows 365 Business, and the same for the Enterprise. So for both versions, use the same one, same sort of licensing assignment. From a, capability, from a license requirements capability, there are no license requirements for Windows 365 Business. But for Windows 365 Enterprise, you do have a Win 10, 11 Enterprise, Intune, and Entre P1 licensing requirement. Networking cost perspective from a business, Windows 365 Business, um, outbound data per month is based on the RAM of the cloud PC. So when you have the 2 gig RAM version, it's 12 gig outbound. When you have 4 gig RAM, you get 20 gig outbound. 16 gig of RAM, you get 40 gig outbound, and with 32 gigabit of RAM, you get 70 gig outbound. With Windows 5 Enterprise, uh, Azure bandwidth pricing applies as uh, the networking goes via Azure VNet. And I'm not sure if it's cut off from the screen. It looks like it's cut off from my screen, but I've got seat limits as well at the bottom of the table. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, but for Windows 5 Business, seat limits are capped at 300 seats per tenant, and with Windows 5 Enterprise, there's no seat cap per tenant. Per tenant it's it's uh, unlimited. Um, moving on to looking administratively, so let's just do a comparison from an administrative perspective. From a provisioning capability, Windows 365 business is simple uh, and uses a default configuration. Um, it's auto provisioned with, with standard images, also. There's not a lot much, not a lot to the business, and as we've seen when, when I was deploying it. From a Windows 5 Enterprise perspective, it's configurable and customizable. It includes the network, user permissions, and specific policy as well. And you can use custom images um, are also supported. So no custom image support for business. From a policy management capability perspective, uh, with uh, W365 business, it's not supported. But with W365 enterprise, you get GPU and Intune MDM is both support, they're both supported. Obviously it's got hybrid as well, isn't it? For the, from a joint perspective, so the GPU has to be supported. App deployment with business, only supported with Intune license. But with M365 enterprise, Windows 365 Enterprise, sorry, it's fully supported. Uh, Windows Update capability with Business, it's the default Windows Update for Business. But with uh, Enterprise, it's Intune Admin Center options, so any, any options in there to update devices you can use. Device management is very limited with Business. Um, it's very much, in my opinion, a capability for, for businesses with very limited IT support. But for enterprise, you use it uh, in Tune Admin Center for, for sort of the device management, and we've seen how we do that already. Monitoring, there's no support, nothing supported with business, but with enterprise, you do use endpoint analytics. Again, troubleshoot and printing, again, not supported with business. However, with enterprise, from a troubleshooting perspective, using in Tune troubleshooting blade, and from a um, print perspective, it's supported, you can use printers. So, 
that's done with this episode again it's no demo just wanted to kind of focus a little bit more on um the sort of comparisons between business and enterprise and as i mentioned before we're not going to be we're not going to have demos in every episode coming towards the end of um this subtopic of windows 365 um but uh, any questions around any sort of comparison or any anything you you want to add to that please let me know that ice part one we've got another part on the sort of comparisons coming up um, you know, drop me a like, drop me a comment, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm, I'm almost at 30k, my target for the end of the year is 50. I know it's very, I'm, I'm, it's a big ask, but you know what, I thought why not give it a try. Um, if I aim, the higher, higher I aim, hopefully the, 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 I might get close to it, but uh, probably the higher number I'll get. It's not all about subscribers, but um, I feel like if I do a target, that's going to motivate me to do more content really. So. Um, you know, so I'm at not almost 30, so not not quite halfway to over. You know, started off on let's say the start of this year, started off on on around 20ish, 23k maybe. Um, so almost at 30. I'd like to hit that in the next couple of weeks if I can. And I need your support for that. So thank you again for continuing to support me. Um, and until next time, goodbye.